Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. We're going to be covering a first look at some of the gameplay and then in the future you're going to be watching full one hour, yes one hour gameplays of Roots of War Alliance footage. So what we're going to be covering here is a first glimpse into TT versus whoever they're fighting in this. We're not really going in depth on the you know combat here as you can imagine in this video. So stay tuned for more. Hello everyone. So yes, we're going to be going over basically this first look at this combat system. So we're going to be seeing how Roots of War operates. It's going to be a nice little ease into it before the big boy videos come out where we're going to be showcasing the big 30 versus 30 combats. So in this, this was just like the remnants of whoever was left over, you can imagine. So there's only 22 people for TT fighting and potentially only seven against their opponents. So you can imagine it's a nice, easy victory for them to go in. We're going to have two different point of views as well to go through. At the moment, we have one of the coolest and the cutest. Miawa is streaming. This is his point of view right now. And we have another member of TT called Z Zun. I hope I pronounced that right. But that is a more clearer picture as you can imagine. So we're going to be able to flick between both of these guys' point of view during this and showcase different parts of the map and the strategy that's going to be involved. So when we look at the timer, it is almost go time for them. Five seconds to go. I hope you guys are strapped in. And the cool thing is, we're going to see how this all works, right? So we're going to see the initial opening. We're going to be able to see the markers set, for example, as well as just the ease of understanding what's going on. So here we've got our Z Zun, and then if we go onto Miawa screen, let's just see, he's probably doing his own intro himself. So let's go back over and see in a moment when they click the enter button, here we go, here in the confirm, and just like that, as you can imagine, like Ark of Osiris, you are teleported into the new zone. So again, we're looking at this point of view from this player, and the way we're doing this, if you guys are wondering, are is through discord and discord's an amazing thing and if you guys are interested in this we might even create a brand new discord channel in my own discord community called roots of war where you guys can be streaming your games whenever you've got them and i can just jump in like we are now and watch your point of view and get some roots of war footage right so here you're going to see the map, and it's a really cool map, right, for the first time. It's very tight, as you can imagine, as well. It's quite small at, compared to the actual visualization of the first map. So we're going to see how close things are within the next minute, right? Because in this next minute is when you are able to start attacking buildings. So in these first three minutes, as you can um, see this is classed as the preparation phase right so this is when people are entering and getting prepared for the event so during this this is when more people should be entering getting the for example markers set if you're an office member for all the different buildings that you will be trying to take over so we're back in it as well, if you've noticed, we've got two screens, so we're gonna be able to flip between two, and the camera hopefully is set perfectly for you guys, so hopefully this little bit of a setup is nicely. They've got one minute to go on the timer, three members are in, obviously they've got 22 members to go, but a load of members are hopefully gonna be joining in at the moment. Uh, I know Miawa still isn't in, obviously, so now he has joined though, if we look on his screen, so Miawa is in, We've got Zizun who's in next to him. So you can see these are the first two guys. And we're going to obviously watch what they are going to do. Really funny thing, Wayne obviously getting caught on camera with his troops outside of your city. So that's a really good point to remind all of you guys before we get into any of the nitty gritty stuff of the first footage of gameplay of this game mode. You need to make sure your... All your troops, legions, you know, everything is back in your city. You need to make sure you haven't got war friends there. And you need to make sure your hospitals are all empty, right? So make sure everything's all reset, ready to go. And then you can enter 
without any issues. So at the moment, we've got five cities in at the moment from these guys. I don't know if they've got any opponents in. I haven't seen, obviously, these guys come out. So now we can see the battlefield opening and the flying units are able, as you can see already, to fly over that. So that is one thing we didn't think that you could do from all the assumptions and gameplay knowledge from what we, we could make out to be a fair balancing issue. But these guys, you can. You can fly straight behind. So we're going to hopefully see that in a moment. So let's flick over to Meowers screen here. We can see Meower. He's already trying to catch up. We've got a load of those tiles out there. And if you're wondering what those tiles are, what Zin Zun was going for on his screen are the gathering tiles, right? So those gathering tiles are going to get you passive score and get you nice amounts of points right and you don't have to fight for that that's just there for you to take so try and get that early game if you're maybe in a quiet game like this would be a very good way of getting some points so if we go back over to let's see Meowa's screen see what mr Meowa is doing and see if we can showcase hopefully some different gameplay here but his stream doesn't seem to be wanting to work so let's go back into z zones and keep on the nice and crisp anyway so TT have control of that Tree of Courage. So the Tree of Courage, again, if you're wondering, is that attack and defense buff? The Hall of Nature there is granting them a nice amount of points, so it's a really good increase for them. So they're gaining a bunch of stats so far for all of their units. So a really quick push. They've got the Hall of Power as well. So at the moment, as you can see, Wayne, his units are being the flying units and because they're so fast, he's just going and basically claiming the first occupation of those buildings. So this is a really cool strategy that you could do if you're in a maybe a quiet fight like you can see right here. Because by doing this, you're gaining actually some first occupational rewards ready to go when the scores start operating, right? So we'll see what Wayne does here. He's obviously gonna try and get the Tree of Healing Obviously, the cavalry unit beats into it, which is cool, but it takes up two minutes, right? They need to stand in there for two minutes to get that occupation. So, TT waiting for those timers to complete. And once those timers start to complete, you're going to see, as you can see now, the influence, right? The score per minute is starting to increase on the TT side. And this is because they're claiming those buildings. So this is all similar to Ark of Osiris. Nothing too crazy. And I hope you guys are understanding this is a nice introduction to the Roots of War event before we start covering some absolute craziness where it's going to be massive open field fighting, right? So... The outpost here, really cool building to capture as well. Getting that is going to give you fog of war. So getting that fog of war is going to allow you to see more. And the cool thing again in this is, as you can see, Z Zun isn't using these units. This is someone else's units, but they have their own AOE. So you can see now in this zoom out, he can't see much, right? It's all blacked out. But those units further up, like those ones at that Hall of Nature, they're creating vision for you as a player to see. And you can always obviously react to this. Obviously, these are reacting to all the differences in the timers now. Understanding you can capture these buildings by just putting one build unit in and letting that two minute timer tick down to capture it really, really fast, as you can imagine. But... Obviously, in the main game mode, you can imagine your enemy might be rallying and attacking your point. So you need to make sure these buildings are garrisoned for that two minutes to make sure you get that, that occupational capture, right? So we're going to just see some a little bit more of gameplay, and then we're going to basically give you a nice little cut, see a little bit more into the future, and see what they're going to do here, because obviously there's no enemies. So how they're going to gain points for these matches is going to be very, very interesting. Welcome back guys. So time has elapsed a little bit and what you can see here, a really cool feature, is that pedestal. So that pedestal right there, where the units were walking away from, you can put units inside. By putting a unit inside, you can potentially basically protect it as the first capture point. So really cool concept. So you basically can hold this ground and then leave with that lifestone potentially, which will spawn in the top left corner in eight minutes 
and 50 seconds, right? So they've got the first occupational rewards. These are what the banners at the top are showcasing. So you can see the trainees have entered, you know, the hall of water at this location. And then you'll see another one later on, which will basically say they have captured this, gaining that score. So you can see the score nice and simple going up. This is a one hour battle like i said in the intro so just imagine when you are playing this you're gonna be locked and loaded so make sure your city is in a safe zone and not open to attacks here so really cool the terrain as well and the battlefield we get to see periodically as zuzin is obviously moving his units around is basically showcasing some cool buildings. So in the very center, I don't know if you've noticed it, there was a really cool like castle, like a big massive Weststone Abbey. So it allowed you to do that um, and fight around it, fly over it and do, you know, really cool, hopefully cinematic fight for future Roots of War videos. But there you can see the behemoths are fighting me. And I think within that timer, six minutes from 45, you as a beast master will then be able to summon your behemoth. So that is some very important information here in a first look video, because again, if you're looking at this without any of the combat and you're just trying to figure out some important notes to write down, basically at that 45 minute mark, it appears, you can start summoning those behemoths. So we'll soon see how this goes. Um, we don't know if that fighting means the behemoth is currently is summoned and it's fighting for the duration of six minutes, because obviously Zuzin hasn't clicked over this. We don't know what that situation is. So when it does come to there, hopefully we'll be able to update that information live on this video. So, so far, as you can see, you've got the units all spread around. You've got a load of the units capturing the uh, outposts. And that is a summon. So now he's actually figured it out. So if he clicks on the fighting, you can see there has been a behemoth summoned. And it's been actually summoned just nearby someone's castle. I think it was just a showcase. You can summon this maybe at the 10 minute mark. So maybe at 10 minutes, you can summon your first behemoth. Or whenever you want to summon that first behemoth, it will then start from then. But it gives you a timer. You can see that behemoth is there. It's just something to the left of the city just to showcase it maybe for a video like myself. And that time is actually the timer of the duration. So we've got a live update on information. So do apologize if you only just watched that a little bit and skipped on through. And if you've been following the video all the way through, congratulations to you. Because this is what this channel is about. We're all about learning and adapting as soon as we see it, right? So we know the now Lifestone will be available in five minutes and 50 seconds. And then after, again, another four minutes and 50 seconds, that behemoth that has been summoned will despawn. So obviously there's a timer for those behemoths. They can't last forever. Obviously these behemoths can be destroyed. Remember, if you are fighting on the battlefield, you will be able to actually target these guys and fight them and kill them so they're not on the battlefield, right? So obviously nice easy introduction so far video to it we're going to wait uh, and skip ahead of time to see these life stones spawn and hopefully see how this interaction works because you can see again we've got units ready at those locations to capture it and showcase capturing them for you Hello, welcome back. I'm going to talk about a little bit of the UI again because I think there's some more information about the UI that we haven't talked about and it is that top right corner. If you look at the very top right corner, that is the map where you get to see, right? So the white big almost trapezium is your camera. So that's what you're looking at on the vicinity. So if you keep watching that top right corner where his gems is, you're going to see that white box move. While you're looking on that, you're going to see some green dots. And those green dots are actually your marches. So if you're looking at your where your marches are placed, it's got a really easy understand UI, right? If you're garrisoned units, your units will be a green dot on one of the buildings, right? Very important information for you to look at there. And then again, if you look at one more time at that map, you'll be able to see if you squeeze your eyes a little bit, I know it's a little bit um, tight there, but you'll be able to also notice the map has some red dots and those red dots are available for you to basically see the markers. Those are the officer's markers and maybe points of 
interest for your March. So you can see at the moment, the Lifestone is now available or was available and it's traveling. So you can see the, it is moving currently on the map. So again, a little bit of UI information and I know we're gonna get Zeus in later on showcasing the Lifestone spawning and hopefully he gets to capture it and maybe move it to the correct building. So let's see in that in the future when I do a nice little quick snap and transition. Hello, and here we are. We'll go showcase some Lifestone footage, as you can see. So there is the Lifestone, and it's being moved by some infantry. So the goal is to bring that to a building to score the points for it. And a real cool thing is, again, you can see on the map now, if you go and look very carefully, the Lifestone is a very big white circle. So you can actually see visually where this lifestone is. And I believe this will only be available if you've got fog of war, right? So you can see the lifestone's been dropped there. And that's by obviously entering a resource tile like the rules stated. So if you wanna drop this and give it to someone else so they can score points, you can enter a tile and it will drop it. And then someone else will be able to claim it. Obviously then these guys must then take this lifestone and enter a building like the Hall of Nature here and they're gonna score those points. So nice and simple, there we go, claimed and the victory banner on the very top showcasing who obtained the lifestone. So the next one is unavailable right now until eight minutes. So hopefully we're gonna get Zizun over to one of the pedestals and hopefully in eight minutes time, we're gonna see that lifestone spawn at one of the random locations and hopefully we call it lucky. Welcome back. So. We've only got 35 seconds left to go and that Lifestone will spawn. So hopefully we get to see it spawn in this middle location. It's always random, remember? So hopefully we get to see that animation. And when it pops up, hopefully it's just not just a little quick pop, but there's some important information to give you guys. Again, so we are learning more and more as this game mode in this first quick intro and free win, if you wanna call it, for TT here. But if you are using the Lifestone, you cannot, and this is, re remember this, you cannot use any artifacts. Meaning, if you've got the Lifestone artifact, and as you see there, uh, the Lifestone's just popped up, really cool. I would say, fighting to see who captures it. But when you have your artifact, you'll see you can't use it. So that means if you're trying to use the Cloak of Stealth to try and hide this, you're not gonna be able to. And then you can see um, as well, look, he's letting me know he's got it. We, we know, we know, buddy, we're all watching you live. So thank you very much, Zujin Jr. as well, for helping out and participating as a great champ. But as I was saying, it means you can't use certain artifacts, right? So you can't abuse the, the certain mechanics in the game. Because again, if you're wondering about that Cloak of Stealth, if you activate it first, and then try to capture the life store, it will disappear and you will lose the stealth. It will always disappear on any sort of action and you maintain it as long as you're passive and not doing any sort of aggressive based move. So here, all you gotta do, as you can see, nice and simple, once you got that lifestone, you're gonna take a movement speed penalty, as you can see, this cavalry not moving as fast as you could imagine here, but as long as you can get it to one of your main buildings here, you're gonna score some points, and that is what's mainly about it, scoring points and getting that personal score up so you can gain more and more rewards. So that is gonna be, honestly, today's video. It's a nice little first look into it. It's got a nice little tips and tricks and we've learned quite a lot playing and watching, shall we say, through this um, screen share by Zoom Junior in the TT, which is the Trading Alliance, which is really nice to see us uh, working all together. And thank you for helping us provide this footage through Discord. So with all that said, guys, thank you for this episode. Smash the like, comment, and subscribe if you've learned something from today. And if you've never participated in this event, this might be the perfect video for you. It's nice and simple, nothing crazy goes off. And then, as we said in the future, we have more and more insane Roots of War PvP coming up with full one hour fights from different alliances. So with all that said, I'll catch you in the next video. So stay safe, stay sneaky. Peace out everyone.